Good afternoon, YouTubers. I'm going to talk about using dwarf signals to indicate which way your turnouts are set. But first, let me refer back to a prior video that I did on Rick's Products switch stands, which are simple, mechanically operated switch signals. And I've got one here that's been installed and it's weathered, got ballast around it. It just connects to the throw arm and no electronics, it's just a simple mechanical device. So you're going straight, you got a green signal there on the flag, diverging points, it goes red, and that just goes back and forth. And it's good for operators, so when they're looking at the layout, they know which way the trains are headed. Here's one that has been put in, but it hasn't been painted or weathered. Um, the clearance is a bit tight here, but I checked, nothing hits it. So diverging. That'll be, you gotta paint the flags or the, the signals that'll be red. And then we're straight, it flips over to green. So I, I like them because kind of the simple elegance and they're they're not expensive. It's like $4.50, made in the USA, which is always good. So those will be throughout the layout. But in the case of these um, Walther's curved turnouts, because they're so long and they're curved turnouts, the throw arm doesn't go as far. All of my, all of my other turnouts are Pico mostly six, I've got a few fives, and they're pre-sprung, which is nice. You don't have to worry about putting any kind of springs in there. That's why I, I do the hand throwing. Uh, the Walters are also pre-sprung, but again, because they're long, gradual curves, these are 24, 28 inch um, radius turnouts. The, the, the distance that these points travel is a lot less, so it doesn't actually turn those Rick's signals far enough. So what I did is I played around with fiber optic signals, which is what this is. And I combined that with Iowa scale engineering infrared sensors. So the, the fiber optic system is dwarven by tra trains bought this company. So they make a bunch of different fiber optic applications. Some of them I've talked about on my prior channel, like the signal light that you see at the loading door there is activated with fiber optics. The inside of that building is all fiber optics. Um, so it has this application for sure, as as does LED. I mean, I've got LEDs in the yard light or the scrap yard lights. So I've got them inside that building there. But in this application, this is a fiber optic block signal detector. So it's plugged into DC power. You can just, you can wire that to, I think it's like nine volt DC. And there's two fiber optic inputs, one for red, one for green. And you can have two signals coming off this. So two red fiber optics, two green fiber optics, because you want one in each, on each end of the turnout. And then wiring it up is simple. There's three wires that come off of the Iowa Skilled Engineering Sensor and they plug right into the unit here. So it couldn't get any simpler. So the Iowa Skilled Engineering Sensor, what I did was <clears throat> I, I put an extension on the throw bar here. So it's painted flat black now, but it's basically just styrene, two pieces of styrene to make this a bit longer. <clears throat> and then this, this I cut off so I could access it. And what you see there is a brass tube. And up through the brass tube is the Iowa Scale Engineering Infrared Sensor. So they make two types. They make an under the track, which is what this is. And then they make one that goes across the track. But for this application, under the track is, is better. So um, it, you can hide it. So I put it in there and I spaced it just, just enough so that when this extension moves over top of it, it activates the infrared sensor. And then you know, once I put, I'll glue these ties back in place. I'll put ballast around here. Be careful not to get anything in there, obviously. <clears throat> and then you won't see it. And that's what controls the, the dwarf signal. So when it's straight, so when the train is aligned to go on what is the main here, <clears throat> the, the dwarf signal is green. And when I go over and I throw the turnout here, it'll uncover that sensor. And when you uncover the sensor, it'll reset that dwarf signal to red. Now there's a little bit of a delay because it's meant to be a block signal. So again, I'll go, I'll straighten the turnout, just bump it. It goes green and then we diverge the turnout 
wait a couple seconds, it'll reset to red. So now if you're approaching that signal, you'll from this direction, you'll know that that's not aligned because it's red, obviously. So then you just change the turnout. You're good to go. Um, the reason that delay is in that direction is because of the side that I had to put this on. Now, if I put the sensor on the other side, there's not really room to do that. When I diverged, it would immediately turn red. And then when I straightened, there'd be a six second delay to go to green, which would probably, it would be preferable to have it that way. But regardless, I think a six second delay is fine. Um, so you, the cool thing is you, you won't see it once I glue these ties back in here and I do the ballasting. You, you can't even tell that it's there. And now I, I have signal lights and they will be a set also on the other end. So if you're approaching from this direction, you'll know <clears throat> which way the switches are aligned. And then I'm going to do the same thing to this. You can see I've already prepped and put a hole and I've cut these ties. So there'll be two uh, dwarf signals for this signal, one on each side, this curve turnout. Then I've got another turnout that has, it'll have that existing dwarf signal and another one here if you're approaching from the opposite direction. So those will be the only two turnouts that have working dwarf signals. The others will have these RICS, uh, these RICS signals that I talked about. But you can see how nice they are, They're accurate. So it's a good solution for most of my switches. And in this case of the curves, we're gonna go with these. So one more time, green, diverge the signal. It resets itself to red and you're good to go. So pretty simple, just this Dwarven block signal box comes with the power and it comes with two, I believe two dwarf signals, but I'm gonna use four for these two. Um, the infrared detector, I don't wanna pull it out, but it's just, passed up through that brass tube that you see there. Drill the hole, s slide a piece of brass tubing that's the same diameter as the sensor. Um, and I've, I've just double-sided tape the sensor underneath the train board. And I'm gonna find one here to show you what it looks like. There it is, here's the one that I'm gonna put in the other signal. So that slides up through the brass tube and then there's a We'll hold on the bottom. The only tricky part is making sure that it's oriented right. It's got to be a certain distance from that piece of plastic that moves. And that way you're, in, you're ensuring that it's triggered by that plastic extension. So that's the one that goes under the track. It's called a train spotter by Iowa Skilled Engineering. And they have ones then that shoot sideways across the track. But for this application, the under the track is, is the best. So that's it. And if you get that Dwarven block signal, it actually comes with, <clears throat> or I think it comes with the side ones that go across the track, but they also sell these on trains where you can get them directly from Iowa Scale Engineering. But anyway, it's always fun to be innovative and try things differently. It's a different way of using fiber optics. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great Sunday.